I will just to start tell you a story. It's a story of a 77-year-old lady with diabetes. She was treated for 10 days for urinary tract infection with Augmentin, which is a very classical uh, antibiotic in this indication. And she developed at the end of therapy a very severe di diarrhea. She got an endoscopy showing a very typical aspect of uh, Clostridium difficile colitis. She was treated with uh, metronidazole, but without success. She got two courses of vancomycin, but the, she got recurrences with this uh, therapy. So we decided to treat this lady with a fecal transplantation. The concept is to ingest uh, a normal flora via the gastric uh, system or via the colon, and the uh, colonization is progressive, leading to a normal flora after one week or 10 days. And it's what happened to this lady. She, was, uh, she recovered very quickly from the disease without any recurrence. There are three uh, main sites uh, which are colonized in the organism and, and uh, participate to the microbiome. The oropharynx flora, which is an anaerobic flor flora, the uh, cutaneous flora, which is mostly staphylococcus, and the colonic flora, which is the most uh, important and the most uh, prevalent. We have a lot of uh, huge number of microorganisms in the gut for 10 to the 14th per gram of feces. It's mostly anaerobic flora, but there are also Enterobacteriaceae, like, uh, uh, like Escherichia coli, which is, uh, let's say, our friend. There are good bacteria in the gut. The anaerobic flora, which uh, is responsible for the colonization resistance, allowing to prevent from the invasion from uh, pathogenic bacteria or resistant bacteria, and also Bacteroides fragilis, which produce uh, enzymes to prevent colonization by resistant, resistant bacteria. The uh, antibiotics completely destroy this uh, equi equilibrium, inducing a lot of uh, biochemical modification, uh, horizontal gene transfer, and selection of resistant microorganisms. They are always in the gut sub-level of resistant microorganisms. It's, for example, the case for Clostridium difficile. It's also the case for Pseudomonas aeruginosa. And when antibiotics are given, the inoculum of those microorganisms increase very sharply. And then uh, eventually this can lead to uh, diseases or nosocomial infections in the most uh, severe patients. The uh, intensive care uh, units are some kind of uh, uh, factory to build uh, very resistant microorganisms. In this case, for example, as you see, uh, Acinetobacter, Sodomonas aeruginosa, and Klebsiella pneumoniae, which can be responsible for nosocomial infections. There are countries in which the resistance is extremely high, like for example India, just because people use a lot of antibiotics, and also because the hygienic measures are really suboptimal, as you can see on this slide. Antibiotics also select fungi, which can lead to colonization of several sites in the organisms, including the urinary tract, or sometimes can be responsible for bacterial translocation, responsible for uh, fungemia, which is a severe symptom. What can we do to prevent this effect of antibiotics? We can, uh, this is a, an interesting technique, microgranules of uh, shark oil, which can entrap antibiotics in the, at the end of the ileum, and so allow a normal PK pharmacokinetics of the drug that prevent the uh, accumulation in the gut. This has been shown uh, with quinolones, which is a, a family of antibiotics. And so we desperately need some uh, new techniques to prevent the side effect of uh, antibiotics on the micro digestive microbiome. Thank you very much.